right? As you know, the rooftop solar system is becoming very popular day by day. One of the most popular topologies in a rooftop solar system is the on-grid or a grid-tie solar PV system under net metering. In this video, we will try to look at the working principle of a net metering solar PV system. So, in the uh, net metering solar PV system, we have got the solar panels which is generating uh, DC power. We have got a grid tie inverter and we also have the DISCOM grid. DISCOM is the distribution company responsible for power distribution in the particular locality. And of course, you have the load. Between the inverter and the DISCOM grid, we'll have a bidirectional meter which records both the energy which is taken by from the grid and the energy which is given to the grid. This bidirectional meter is used for billing purposes. In this case, say the solar is generating about 10 units of energy and the load demand is about 3 units. What happens in this case is the load is lesser than the solar generation. Here, out of the 10 units generated, 3 units will go to the load and the remaining 7 units gets exported to the power utility grid. So, no energy is taken by the power utility grid and 7 units of energy gets exported to the power utility grid. In case 2, again we have the solar panels and the solar is generating some amount of energy. We have a grid tie inverter and the discount grid and the bidirectional meter and the load demand is higher than the solar generation. So, solar is generating 10 units of energy, however the load is 13 units of energy. In this case, 10 units of uh, energy will come from the solar panels and the remaining 3 units will come from the power utility grid. That's the this grid. So, the total demand of 13 units is met by the combination of 10 units from solar and 3 units from the power utility grid. So, in this scenario, there is an import of energy from the discount grid and there is no export of any energy to the discount grid. So, we now come to case 3. Here, we have got a load demand of about 3 units and solar is uh, generating, rather solar is available. However, the grid is absent. So, it's either there is a power shutdown or there is a maintenance. So, discount grids are not available. Since it's a grid tie system, the inverters are connected into the LT panel. Though there is solar available, that is solar is generating, so the solar panels is generating some amount of energy, that cannot be used. So, that energy doesn't flow into the inverter. So, in an on-grid system, the presence of the discount grid is mandatory for the effective working of the system. There is neither an export nor an import of energy from the power utility grid. So, how is the load demand catered? If you have a UPS, you can run your loads through the UPS. Now, uh, we come to case 4. Uh, in case 4, you have a demand of about uh, 3 units. The grid is available. However, there is no solar. That is, it is night time. So, in this scenario, the entire load demand of 3 units is catered exclusively by the power utility or the discount grid. So, obviously, there is only import of energy and there cannot be any export of energy to the power utility grid. So, how much energy can you draw? So, that is up to your sanction capacity. Every uh, load will have a certain sanction capacity sanctioned by the discounts. So, you can draw up to your sanction load. In the typical uh, rooftop solar system, there are generally two meters installed in your LT panel. That is a solar generation meter which records only the solar generation and a bidirectional meter. This bidirectional meter records both the import and export of energy. The bidirectional meter is the one which is used by the discounts for billing. This is a typical net metering bill given by the discount. This is for a certain consumer in Bangalore. This is the format in which the BESCOM, that's the discount in Bangalore gives the net metering bill. This is for the period of uh, March 2020. We will try to run the different aspects of a net metering bill. So, here the consumer has a sanction load of 5 kilowatt and they have installed a 3 kilowatt solar system. In most discounts, they either allow you to install solar either up to your sanctioned load or less than the sanctioned load. And this is a bill for a period of one month. 
and now these are the different aspects of the bill so here you can you get both import and export readings so this is the present reading this is the previous reading this is the difference so the total import of energy is the present reading minus the previous reading that turns out to be 80 units and the total export is again the difference of present reading and the previous reading that turns out to be 382 units there is however a, a factor called as a power factor it is supposed to be unity since it's little less than that the best calm or the discounts can levy a penalty on this this is now the solar generation side uh, readings this is only what is being generated from the solar so this is the present reading this is the recorded md md is the maximum demand so in this period of one month the maximum generation which has happened is 2.31 kilowatt and the previous reading turns out to be 1037 units so the total generation for a period of one month is 438 units so how does this schematically translate so the total solar generation for that particular month is about 438 units out of which 382 units has gone to the discount that is 382 units of export and 80 units has been taken from the grid this is the energy which is taken from the grid when solar is not available so how much has the load consumed so we have a solar generation of 438 units we have out of which 382 units has been exported to the power utility grid and 80 units has been taken or imported from the power utility grid so out of the 438 units generated about 56 units has been consumed by the load plus 80 units has been taken from the grid when solar was not available so the total usage from the load or the residence is 136 units of electricity or 136 kwh we will now come to the second part or the commercial part of the bill since there is an energy export which has happened to the power utility grid the power utility grid that's the discount has to pay a certain amount to the consumer in this case it is 1205 rupees this 1205 is for the net export of 302 units into the feed-in tariff fixed by authorities as 3.99 that turns out to be 1205 so the Bescom has to pay the consumer rupees 1205 for that particular month. However, there is a contracted load or there's a fixed charges of rupees 340 rupees. That is for a contracted load of 5 kilowatt, the consumer has to pay a fixed charges of rupees 60 for the first kilowatt and 70 for the remaining 4 kilowatt, which turns out to be rupees 340 rupees for that particular month. There is, however, no energy cost since the export is higher than the import. So, arithmetically, no energy has been taken from the discount grids. However, there is a penalty of rupees 25 since the power factor or PF was less than unity for that particular month. So, the total liability from the consumer to the discount is the sum of fixed charges plus energy charges plus penalty, which turns out to be rupees 340 plus 0 plus 25 which is equivalent to rupees 365 so summing it up the discount has to pay the consumer 1205 and the consumer has to pay discount rupees 365 so in net the discount or the best calm in this case has to pay the consumer an amount 840 rupees for the month of march 2020 so what is the total benefit for the consumer is for that particular month there is no bill to the consumer plus an income of rupees 840. Thank you very much.